Hello, thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about the tanpura. What is this instrument? How is it played? And what is it function? So, the tanpura is one of the most important instruments in Indian music, arguably the most important, because everything that we do musically relates to this instrument. And so the tanpura, it's providing this background flow of sound, and we call this a drone. And to me, the tampura really represents, it's like the canvas upon which we're painting. If, if this was a visual painting, this would be the backdrop. And then all the colors come from the instrumentalist or the vocalist and the other instruments. But without this, there is no creation. So uh, let's talk a little bit about how it's tuned and then we'll get into how it's played. So this is a five string tanpura. Some are four strings. Uh, the extra string just gives us a couple more options for um, making tuning variations. And so with a five string tanpura, the basic tuning is going to be So in Western music, that would be five, one, 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 one octave lower. Um, the notes with that would be G, C, 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 C. And so what this does is it allows for a, a really broad scape of overtones. Now there are variations on this tuning we can do and we'll get into that later. So it's very important that your, your tampur is tuned precisely. This, this needs to be exact for it to give us the resonance. And so one thing I want to show you about tuning precisely is that we have these beads at the bottom. And the beads allow us to fine tune if we're a little sharp or flat without having to go up to the wooden peg. And so this is a great tool when you're fine tuning your tanpura to be able to use these beads. If you move them away from the bridge, it will get sharper. And if you move them towards you, it will get flatter. I'll just show you. So that's how we use the tuning beads. Very important feature of the tanpura. So let's look now at how do we hold and play the tampura. Um, there's many ways to sit with it, and this is a basic, comfortable way to just be cross-legged and let it rest upon your legs. And it should be so that it's relatively stable and you don't have to use any awkward positioning. Now, the left hand can support the neck, and if you're right-handed, we'll use our right hand to pluck the strings. When playing the tanpura, the thumb will always be mounted on the neck like this. So that's the first step. Allow your thumb to mount on the neck. And for the best tone, it's nice to be about halfway. Not too far here, not too far here, but somewhere in the middle. And one of the first points to remember when playing the tanpura is that the positioning of the hand is more parallel to the strings. You don't want to be going cross like this. This parallel position will give you the best tone. So, here's the basic technique for how we strike the strings. We're going to use two fingers, the middle finger and the first finger, and the middle finger will be used on the first string only, the fifth. After striking here, we'll transition to the first finger. Second, first, 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 first. So that's our finger position. Now, what you'll do when you're playing the tanpura is experiment with different amounts of pressing into the string as opposed to plucking. This is a sound that we don't want a thin sound like this. So instead of thinking about plucking and pulling, I'm more pushing into the string almost with a downward motion. And you can hear that's giving me a nice rich tone. And our goal with this instrument is to just really provide a continuous loop of sound that's uninterrupted. 
So this is really a feeling that you'll get the hang of as you practice. The main points, the thumb is planted, second finger, and then first. The hand stays parallel to the strings. And then experiment with that pressure, pressing down and into the string as opposed to plucking away. And now you can hear there's a certain rhythm that I'm playing. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now the tampura in the music, it's not following the rhythm of the song or the performer. It has its own rhythm. And this rhythm is just about a flow of overtones. I'm not really counting a beat so much as I'm listening for continuation. And the little pause on the last string is really to let this bass note resonate for a little extra moment. Now, the basics of playing, thumb planted, second, first, 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 and let's see, you'll practice getting the feel of that tone, and another thing to note about this instrument is that it has a nice range of different keys, whatever key you might want to play it in. Right now I'm in the key of C, just as a, a basic reference, but you can go all the way down to a low G below this, and you can go all the way up to a D sharp above it. So if you like to sing in the key of B or this, the key of C sharp, this instrument can be tuned accordingly. Um, and so you'll just follow that pattern of the fifth, first, first, and the first. So it's been really wonderful sharing this with you. I hope that you are enjoying playing the tanpura if you have one. If you don't have one and you're interested in one, this particular tanpura is one that I import um, from my choice maker in India, and I'm very happy with these instruments for singing, for accompanying music, for recording. Um, so visit my store to uh, look at purchasing one of these instruments and uh, check in again. I have more to talk about with the tanpura with special tuning variations and some stories. So thank you.